Welcome back to Zanzier, the real people multi-games solitaire mega tournament, human trill leg two. We're about to have a clash, it seems. Sweet Peas forces, um, led by Grisberg, the the orc shaman, is heading west towards um, the ghost of Tovard, who of course is the main general currently of Chopper. Um, these two who work together against the, the dragon menace and betrayal at the house on the hill have now slain, um, well, t c collectively slain two dragons together, and so now they're turned in upon each other um, in order to struggle, well, looks like the struggle is happening around between Hagen and Gori, those two countries. Hagen, which is just Germany, I think, and Gori is Rome. It is now Chopper's turn. So here's how Chopper handled the uh, advancing forces. He sent the Ghost of Torvard up to Pelagros and took the one unit there, which was a face down card. We don't know what that was. So he essentially gave up control of Pelagros. Not a huge deal. Pelagros doesn't really do a lot. Easy to recruit there with Khan, not with diplomacy. Um, so it would have been a good recruitment spot for him, but I think he wanted the military. Then went down to Rog, where meanwhile Baron Gunther of Argu. Um, was recruiting, and he cr recruited another unit, gave it to the Ghost of Torvard. So Ghost of Torvard is now flush. He's he, there's a, He's got an army of five, including himself, which is what Grusberg the shaman, orc shaman, has. So if it comes down to it, they at least have equal forces in terms of number. Now, um, Sweet Pea is a little bit at a disadvantage, actually, because all of her units are, being, are shown, whereas Ghost of Torvard, he has two face-down units, um, and he has the Death Maul, which is pretty great. Um, so that's what's going on down there. Meanwhile, um, Derek the Dragon Warrior started heading uh, southeast, took a space, um, since he wasn't going to be able to get to Zirconia, which is where he was aiming, he drew a movement card. Movement card, um, said that peasants helped him get there, get to Zirconia. So he got to Zirconia anyway, and there he found Morgan of Zirconia. That's a nice little, um, c coincidence that... Morgan of Zirconia was actually in Zirconia. Uh, one of the weird oddities about this game is all all the people are very much of different specific cultures, like the Kadukian peasants, for example. He just ran into these Kadukian peasants not in Kaduk, and chances are if, if you run into Kadukian peasants, they're not going to be in Kaduk. So it's always nice when you actually run into someone in their place. So Derek the Dragon Warrior wants that horse to join his team. Um, he's got four... He's going to reveal this one. Six, seven, seven con against one. He could also do a diplomacy roll, but he, then he'd have to go against the, the Kaduckian peasants as well. Okay, that's great. That's 13 to four. That's definitely going to bring Morgan of Zirconia under the Chapper banner. Just, it's Sweet Pea's turn. Just realizing my excitement, I made a huge error just in reporting. I don't think it actually changed anything. But um, this is actually Honeypot. That's not, as I was saying, Gersberg, the Orc Shaman. Um, still kind of the same thing, you know. You can see Honeypot's units. Uh, Gersberg is also going um, west, however. So he's going, he's going to end up right here. Just very close. There's going to be a showdown. They're kind of closing in. But then here's Derek the Dragon Warrior, an interesting little situation. We've got four different armies, I guess five if you count the army of one, Baron Gunther of Argo. I mean, he may be small, but oh, he's got a, he says, wow, I'm so sexy that no one can resist me. He's a rich, pampered, highborn brat. Really tells it like it is. All right, this is big. Sweet Pea sent Honeypot right in there. She did not hold back, despite all the forces that are amassed in Rog. Um, so here's here's the setup here. She put a lot of her guys in the Conro, which should be pretty interesting. Uh, a far weaker fighting uh, combat side than Chopper. Chopper's got all his forces in in combat, except for one unit which he had sit out of the battle, and that one is face down. Um, so we're going to get started right now. We're going to start by Honeypot and the Eerie Shepherds and the unit of Valar nobles are going to try and talk the riders of Largos into either joining their side or vacating the fight. So it's a six against zero. They get ten, 
against two, that's eight. So if we look here, the target joins the side of the unit doing the con permanently. So the riders of Largos are now on their side. That's gonna really change things up. So now we're just gonna go ahead and go right into combat because there's no con roll or row or anything like that. Um, with the Death Maul, he gets plus two per piece. He only has one piece. And plus one to magic. Okay, so he gets plus two, so he's at eight. And then he gets plus two when fighting against enemies with Kadukian or Valerian. All right, do they have Valerian units? Yes, so he gets a total, he's at 10. Um, the Orc army is at seven. And the Black Riders on plain mounted unit. One, uh, what does that mean on plane? Well, the city's in a plane, so we'll give him a plus one. That's 10, 20, 27 against uh, 14, 21. All right. So that's two, 29 against 22. So that they're going to have to take seven points of damage, and she will divvy that up, and we'll come back. Actually, five, because I neglected the plus um, two that the that the Riders of Largos gets. So she's going to distribute them kind of evenly. Uh, actually, no, I think she's going to distribute them all to one. Which one, she, which one does she know? Probably the first Legion of Gory. They're kind of boring. All right. So they got beat up, but not, not very much. It's not looking very good for Chopper. He might want to decide to retreat. We'll see. This is really hard for Chopper. He does not want to have to run away, but he is going to. He is seriously outgunned here. Um, with their con, and they're, they're about even in the combat. He's got a slight advantage, but with their con row, chances are they're going to, they're going to disable another one of his people, um, this next round. So then he's going to have a severe disadvantage. He really wants to keep going, but I think he has to try to escape. So he's going to roll and then whatever we get on this die is how many get to escape. Two, only two units. So he is going to choose... The Ghost of Tovard, and he's going to have to give up his Death Maul. And they are going to get out of there. So let's see which direction they go. Direction 6. They're going to head into this forest here. Unfortunately, leaving the Prince Gunter behind. Because he's a separate group. And Honeypot's group's now too big, so she has to get rid of a, a unit. She's going to get rid of this first unit of Gory, because she took on um, the Riders of Largos into her group. Nice victory for Honeypot. Bruce Berg, the Orc Shaman, has thinned down his group because he has ordered Hirubi Surma, and this is all actually Sweet Pea ordering him, um, to teleport them over to this hex here. Uh, he's doing. She's 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 chasing Chapper's ghost of Tovar down. Um, I already rolled. There were no fumbles, so it's going to happen. There's going to be a subsequent combat here. Ghost of Tovar and Chopper against Sweet Pea. And Chopper has just revealed who his hero is. He is playing Odrix the Chancellor. Um, Odrix is actually a female, despite the beard. Um, it's a, a function of this world and many fantasy worlds where the, w the women dwarves can have beards. Anyway, so what was he trying to do? Or what is he trying to do? He's trying to control the ancient dwarven cities over here. He's also trying to own two dwarven manufactured items and control two mines, you know, any two of those. So it looks like, you know, he's going for the mines, but that got taken from him. He's still heading towards the cities, but now he's got to kind of fight for his life. Or not. He is going to try to use diplomacy to prevent the battle. So before the battle starts, you know, I know I lined them up, but um, he revealed. And he's got five against, they have five. So it's basically, if he gets a higher roll, maybe equal or higher, I'll have to check. Um, the battle just doesn't happen. So... He's kind of up against a wall. If he would have had a fight, you know, it's going to be tough. Four. I just kind of shook out of my hand. I'll, I'll see if this one will do something. There we go. Four. Oh, my gosh. Okay, i got to check to see what happens on a tie. And he talked him out of it for a turn. So, <laughs> huge cost, though. He had to reveal who he was. Um, luckily, she's, she's kind of used her tricks to go after him. Um... And he'll have a turn to, to try and get away. However, since she has this 
Hirubi Surma, and I'm going to put a marker on him to show that he's used his spell once. She can pursue him pretty easily. Um, tough, cho tough, tough place for Chopper. Not all is good for Sweet Pea this turn. She just sent her madman, or in the Scald, southward towards, presumably, uh, Snugbug. You know, she feels like she's, she's doing a good job of kicking Chopper around, but Snugbug's down here up to something, and she feels like if she doesn't rattle his nest, he might succeed. But that wandering archmage challenged um, the madman to a verbal duel, um, which, as you know, if he loses, he's going to turn someone into a pig. Um... So, not a good chances. It's, you know, the Archmage has has a three-point bonus on Orin the Scald. Now that's eight. That's not bad. Orin could win. Four. That's seven. Not quite. Not quite. So, Orin the Scald, or someone in the group, is going to turn into a pig, which the pig thing is gone, actually. I decided that it would actually be they would turn into trained peasants of Kuduk instead. You're supposed to just uh, share the card, or I forget what you're supposed to do with the card, but I kind of like this idea. He's going to turn them into trained peasants of Kuduk. And that'll be the fifth unit. I don't know if that's a legal unit. Yeah, it is. Okay. So, the escaped hobbit slaves turned into trained peasants of Kuduk. And what are you going to do, Snugbug? What are you going to do? Sweet Pea's coming after you. Um, he walked right through Bratazar, and he discovered a green ore mine. So that means that he's going to take some damage because it's radiation. It's like kryptonite or something. Uh, five points of damage he has to distribute among his people. I think he'll probably give one of those points to these pigs. So the pigs are gone. That's going to replace the escaped hobbit slaves. We'll have those go down there. Pigs are pigs are back. You can turn into pigs. Um, didn't want to show you that. And I guess he'll give give three to the merchants. Those are gone. And then one to the mercenaries. With the discovery of that green ore of mine, I think we're going to end it. We only actually went through one round of turns this game, but it was quite an exciting round of turns. We had a revelation of the Audrix, the Chancellor. Um, we had the, the fall of the Ghost of Tovard as a dominant power. Um, we had Sweet Pea sweeping westward, uh, going southward, spreading all over the place. We had our first direct interplayer conflict. Things are getting close. I have to tell you, from my perspective, it seems like there are a couple of individuals who are very close to their goals. We know that Chopper is not one of them. He hasn't. Um, he doesn't have any items. He's supposed to have dwarven items. He doesn't have any mines, and he doesn't have any dwarf towns. I think we're finding that his struggle against the dragon has really slowed him up. The other two, though, they seem to be doing a bit better. Um, not sure what Snugbug's up to, but he seems to be busy.